After being joined up at Station 50, the cigar, as it's affectionately known, continues on its journey. A cigar is what an assembled fuselage without wings is called in aviation jargon. These will be fitted at the next station. The next hangar, known as Station 40, can accommodate four cigars at the same time. They'll be almost complete aircraft when they leave. The aircraft will be 90% finished when it leaves this station. Wings, main landing gear, tail assembly. The specialists here attach everything visibly missing from the outside of the aircraft. To maintain efficiency, several teams work in parallel at this station too. A crane lifts the wing into position that will later support the aircraft in flight. The 32 meter long and six meter wide wings are the largest aircraft components ever to be fabricated from carbon fiber composite material. The wings of the A350 are something very special. Their development was painstaking and contained over 4,000 hours of wind tunnel testing. Positioning them is an incredible feat too. Several thousand rivets will now keep the wings attached to the fuselage at speeds of up to 960 kilometers per hour. Flap design is optimized to reduce vortex generation resulting in better lift efficiency and improved low speed performance while reducing aerodynamic generated noise from the wing. A special droop nose is integrated into the inboard wing leading edge. It helps the aircraft remain flyable even at low air speeds. This facilitates takeoff and landing. Like the wing, the horizontal tail plane of the A350 is made from carbon too. It has a span of 19 meters and was manufactured in Getafe, Spain. As with the fuselage segments and the wings, all of the electrical and hydraulic systems have already been installed. The vertical tail plane comes from Stade in Germany. It's the only component that is painted prior to installation due to its eventual height. The main landing gear of the A350-1000 consists of two six-wheel bogies. During landing, it has to support a weight of up to 233 metric tons. Following installation, Florent Cubero and his colleagues connect the hydraulic lines that control the landing gear. A combination of adhesive and bolts is used here as well. Florent hasn't always worked on landing gear. He used to be a bricklayer before he applied for a job at Airbus. I come from Toulouse. Airbus is the biggest employer here, and they started this new program with the A350. They were recruiting workers, so I decided to try my luck at Airbus. After the interviews, I was given training and passed the exams. Then I was assigned here to Station 40. Airbus is not only the biggest employer in Toulouse. Aircraft construction is pretty much a part of the regional identity here. The scale of the facility is truly impressive. 23,000 people work for Airbus in the hangars and offices surrounding Toulouse Blagnac Airport. They work five days a week in two shifts. Lunchtime is staggered. The early shift workers go to lunch first, then the office staff. The cooks, working in the 15 restaurants around the factory site, prepare 2.6 million meals each year. 
handling 13.5 tons of steak and 10.5 tons of salad in the process. There are 20 company bus routes operating on the Airbus site. They transport 800,000 passengers each year. Anyone traveling to work with their own car can expect to be subject to strict controls. The site traffic monitoring service takes adherence to vehicle controls very seriously. No one is allowed to drive faster than 30 kilometers per hour. A white Renault, 43 kilometers per hour. Okay, understood, I'll intercept it. Those violating the traffic regulations risk losing permission to enter the site. Hello, sir. I'm from site security. Can you switch your engine off and show me your ID and parking permit, please? Another citation means suspension of the parking permit. You can use this to pick up your parking permit in eight days' time. You have to go to gate B to get it back. Have a good day, sir. Those who persistently violate the rules lose their permit permanently. Back at Station 40. Work continues after lunch, while wings, landing gear, and tail assembly are being mounted to the outside. Specialists are inside the plane, outfitting the cabin. Installing the cabin interior in parallel to assembling the aircraft is new. This change alone has reduced construction time by a third. Francois Louis, head of cabin installation, makes sure that there are no delays with the installation. We previously saw the start of assembly when the large components are installed. Everything that wouldn't fit through the cabin door later, once the fuselage is joined together. Here we're installing the so-called floor-to-floor. The wall lining, overhead compartments, and also the safety components, like the signals for cabin crew and passengers, and the overhead units that contain the oxygen masks. The cabin functions are regulated by a central control unit. In the A350, it ensures 20% higher air humidity and higher cabin pressure than has been usual until now, making it feel a lot closer to normal life on Earth. While the interior is being installed, a worker is in the cargo hold with a rag and brush, Cédric Cabarros. I have to clean this area here before I fix the insulating material in place. Whatever is underneath it will no longer be visible or accessible. Any residues like a metal swarf or other dirt that could be hidden behind it must be removed. Only when we're absolutely sure that this area is pristine can we lower the lining and fix in place the insulation between the exterior and interior of the aircraft. There are some traces here, for example. I use a cleaning cloth with a special solvent for this. There's something here, too. Now I'm sure everything is clean, and I can close up the insulation. The big moment for the entire team at Station 40 arrives. Their aircraft will rest entirely on its own wheels for the first time. Everything must be perfectly clean. No work residues, no drop of oil is allowed to contaminate the brand new aircraft or its tires. The workers activate the hydraulic system. 
they lower their over 100-ton creation. It's an emotional moment for everyone, including for Arnaud. You could say it's like the end of a pregnancy, a kind of birth. But there's a birth at a station every eight to nine days. Over time, that's an awful lot of babies. There's a part of us in every plane. We all put a lot of energy and dedication into our work. It makes us very happy to have done our bit. Arnaud's colleagues check the tire pressure under the load of the aircraft's weight. The aircraft is about 90% finished. It's time to bid farewell to Station 40. The doors open for the station's latest offspring to enter the world. Building aircraft is a real pleasure and is something I'm proud of. This is matched by the great sense of responsibility we feel when later our families, our children, or friends climb aboard. So we're committed to doing a perfect job every day, never overlooking anything, and building aircraft of the highest quality. And it's true, you can't help being filled with a certain pride each time you see one of these huge machines flying away. Everything is ready for the big moment. The openings in the machine are covered to protect against rain before the aircraft is moved to the next hangar. This new A350 will soon be flying for China's Southern Airlines. Millions of people will be putting their lives and their trust in the work performed by Arnaud Herry and his team. Two point five million individual parts are installed in an A three fifty when finished, and they all have to be present, of course. Not even one part can be missing. Airbus gathers together the parts for its aircraft at two logistics centers. Stored on an area totaling 84,000 square meters, the equivalent of nearly 12 football fields, are aircraft parts and everything needed for the cabin interior, galley, overhead compartments, toilets, and seats. Fifty different airlines have ordered the A350. This means 50 different interiors for business, economy, and first class. The logistics specialists supply the components to the assembly hangers as and when needed. This just-in-time process requires precision in supply and demand. David Gaillard is the head of the airlock center. He must be aware of what parts are needed at all times. If just a single curtain is missing, the aircraft cannot be delivered, and the entire production line grinds to a halt. Bearing in mind the number of outstanding orders for the A350, a disaster. David tries to avoid delivery bottlenecks and delays by way of stock keeping. Airbus' strategy involves looking to see where the greatest expertise in a particular discipline is located. 
This is why we work with many factories in Europe and indeed throughout the world too, if you include all of our subcontractors. The logistics are highly complex and that's precisely the challenge our department faces. We coordinate everything and take delivery of parts from all over the world that arrive by plane, train, ship and of course by road too. We're talking about 40,000 deliveries a week. On parle de 40 000 réceptions par semaine. And every single delivered item is checked and logged by David's staff. If any part turns out to be damaged, his team immediately organizes its replacement or repair. <laughs> 